Welcome back, folks. So the Italians are coming soon, and I'm predicting likely end of May or early summer because we're getting World of Tanks 1.0 at the end of this month, and for next month in April we're getting the seventh anniversary. So there should be anniversary event and discounts and stuff, presumably. And there's going to be the grand finals, likely or maybe for this year. So that's April and May. And there's going to be testing of 1.01 patch with the Italians. So I'm guessing late May or early summer or so for the Italians and their mediums. But today we got the reveal of the high tier mediums, and it's pretty interesting, at least for one of them. Two out of the three were pretty much predicted. So we're getting the Panthera, the Pantera. Uh, tier 8, so basically a Panther with the P43 TER, the TER version at Tier 7. Looks like it, but it has a 90mm gun and a new auto reloading system. At Tier 9, it's the Leopard prototype, not the OTO Leopard 1. So not the modified Leopard 1, but that's a Leopard prototype. Alright, it has a 105, I believe. And here is the Tier 10. <laughs> it's a stitched monster, so it's the Projecto, basically the same as the Premium, but all the components are stitched from actual sources, but they never actually made the vehicle. There were no blueprints, there were no models. The parts are real, but <laughs> it's a monster, so... Historical accuracy. Why don't we even? Why don't we even talk about it? It doesn't matter anymore. Just out the window. But yeah, it looks futuristic. The sloping on the upper plate, that's pretty cray cray. So there shouldn't be that much armor on this thing. But who knows? As an MG42, Hitler's buzzsaw on this thing. All right. But yeah. Okay, I mean, it looks futuristic. It's not the OTO Leper 1, so not a copy and paste of the Leper 1 with a new system of the auto reloader, but alright, I'll take it. It looks fancy enough, and this thing should be fast, like the Bat Chat should be. So we'll see, but for this video, I want to talk about the auto reloading system, because initially after the reveal, of the premium, the Projecto M35, all of the players thought 1000 DPM. That's kind of horseshit. <laughs> and everybody went batshit crazy. Oh my god, 1000 DPM. This new system suck ass. <laughs> so that's the whole thought process with the initial reveal and why Wargaming doesn't put the actual DPM on the preview page. So today we'll debunk some of the myth and talk about the actual correlation between the DPM to the auto reloader stages. Basically, this is a math video. Nerd! So, don't try to go to sleep if I can help you not do so, but we're going to talk about DPM. So, that may be arousing enough, you sick bastards. But here is the initial reveal of the Projecto M35. Model 1946. So everybody took a look and thought, yeah, this DPM. <laughs> Garbage. 883. Holy crap, that sucks. That's not for a fully trained crew, not for 100%, but God, that is bad. And the 100% crew trained DPM stat is like 1000, so. It was bad, but the gun performance with the penetration and the alpha and the accuracy and aim time, it's basically like the mutts. But nope, <laughs> the DPM really sucked. So I took the liberty, I gathered up all the stats, but here is the months previous uh, exposure of the original stats, the preview of the stats. So for the Panthera, we are getting 12 seconds, then 10 seconds, then 8 seconds for the reload. It's still a 90mm like the M35, but it's a little bit faster to reload, quote unquote. So the accuracy is not as good, 0.37 compared to the 0.32 on the M35. 
and the in time is also not as good, but all right. But here is the pro proto typo <laughs> standard B with 105, so a lot more penetration, a lot more alpha, but accuracy 0.35. It's all right, but the intershell reload time is 3.5, so it's a little bit long, and it should be pretty fast. It's like the Leopard One should be. And here is the Projecto M40 with the four round clip, not the three round clip. So, all right, but I correlated all the stats, all the DPM into one Excel spreadsheet. So math, but here we go. So yeah, there is 1000 DPM. That's for loading the original first shell and firing it and keep loading it. So basically you load all the 13 seconds all the time. And therefore, yeah, that's pretty bad for a 90 millimeter. That's terrible. So take a quick look, but it's a wall of numbers, wall of text and numbers. But if you load the last shell and fire the last shell, it's about the same. And yeah, it's slightly below average as a conventional one shot system tank. But if you fire two rounds, out of the three, that's a DPM. If you fire between the two rounds, it's 1,151. So basically, these are all the choices, all the possible ways of using your shells in the auto reloading cycle drum tray thing. So yeah, best DPM if you fire at the fully loaded clip, but only reload that original shell. You don't dive deeper into the clip for the burst, but if you dive all the shells into the clip, that's the DPM. So if you play this thing like a fully auto reloader, it has 1200 DPM. So yeah, very rarely you'll get the 1000 DPM. That's for like, if you fire after you reload the first shell all the time, that's bad. That's really bad, but eh, eh. I don't know. It depends on skill. It depends on map awareness. But most of the time, it's usually in this section, the blue section with fully reloaded complete tray or complete drum. Same goes for the Panthera. So take a look at the stats, but the stats are a little bit better, but the accuracy, the aim time is not as good as the premium. So that's a trade off, I think. And these are all initial stats. So obviously they will be changed, they will be adjusted for the crew skills, yada yada. But taking a look at the prototypo standard B, yeah, below average DPM for a tier 9, but you do have the auto reloader. And 1500 DPM is not as bad, quote unquote. But tier 9s usually have a lot of DPM, like the M47, M46 with the M47 turret. Or the E50 or the T54, yeah, crazy DPM. <laughs> so the main competition I think for this vehicle is likely the T54 E1, but it's faster. It should be decent. And finally for the tier 10, we have a bunch of numbers. So the best DPM you could get is about 2,400. So yeah, yeah okay. But yeah, if you unload all the shells, it's like 1,400. <laughs> if you reload at the last shell in the clip, it's like 1,200. So yeah, it should be played like two round burst, three round burst, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you start at the two round burst, it's like 1,800. Mm, I mean, you do have the speed, but mm, uh, I think players could prefer to play the bat chat, but it's more about more frequent ambushes than actual assassination with these vehicles. So it's like burst of two shells, burst of like one or three, actually, then you run away. And it's not like a burst of full alpha, full complete potential alpha with the five rounds in the bat chat. It's like you bursting two, bursting three, and you run away. So I'm guessing that's the play style, but here is a test dummy of a five round clip. 
seems more viable for a clip, but yeah, the longer you go towards the last shell in the clip, the lower the DPM, obviously, like really low. So, eh, it depends on your playstyle, but that's the wall of text, wall of numbers, but here are some actual characteristics of the auto reloaders that I gather from the videos, from the developer diaries video, whatever you want to call those. But all the auto reloaders could fit a rammer. So here is the 1.0 test server, and I put a rammer on these vehicles on the premium. It buffed the DPM, buffed all the stages of the reload. So that's great, but it also applies to the vents as well as Brothers in Arms, and the food, so yeah, it's a lot better than using Enhanced Gun Lane Drive because the aim time is relatively good for these vehicles, relatively, for comparing to the autoloaders, yeah, it's not bad, so you don't need the EGLD, but alright, so here are the general characteristics, you could fit a gun rammer, the reload is separately applied to the individual shells, from the clip or the tray, so you could reload while you're unclipping the clip. But if the ammo type is changed while you're having a fully loaded tray, they basically unload all the tray and reload the new shell type. So if you want to go from AP shell to APCR, everything's unloaded. <laughs> that sucks. I mean, you cannot do it in the middle as well, because you cannot have AP APCR, then back to AP. Doesn't work like that. So everything unloaded. <laughs> that sucks. So if a new shell is going to reload while the intershell reload is also occurring, so that's good. So you have an intershell reload and you have a new shell reload into the tray. But if you fire it this time, everything is reset. So you don't have the loading of the shell if you fire while it's loading in the tray. So you'll see that in the original developer diary video, but that's the generalization of the characteristics. So basically the playstyle should be somewhere between shooting as a conventional one-shot gun of a tank to other spectrum of playing as an autoloader. So somewhere in the between, somewhere of shooting two rounds or three rounds and run away and come back and shoot like one or two and run away. So it's a little bit more frequent of an ambush than the assassination attempt by bat chats. So it's a little bit more like the Shkuda T5051 ish of a playstyle, but their reload is like 20 seconds or something. <laughs> or like the T57 Heavy, that's like 25 seconds. So I don't know, but it should be a lot faster than. The T57 Heavy, obviously, but is it fast enough to compare with the Shkuda T5051, the TVP T5051? Well, the TV T5051 is also pretty fast as well, so it has more of a bite. So I'm guessing that's the main appeal, but it has better accuracy, better aim time than autoloaders. But what's really the fly in the ointment? is the Czechoslovakians. Their 100mm is relatively good, pretty accurate, and good to aim, fast to aim, but I don't know, but there you go folks. The general characteristics of the auto reloaders, but it's mostly about the math. So yeah, there are times where you are in an emergency situation and you have to fire whenever you have a shell loaded. And the DPM is pretty terrible <laughs> if you're at that point of the battle, but try to load more than one shell into the clip, obviously, but yeah, maximum DPM is when you have all the shells loaded and you only fire one. The worst DPM is when you have no shells loaded and you're firing only one or more than one, but yeah. <laughs> It's pretty rough. And the correlation between the sloping of the curve or the difference of the variables, it's linear. So there's no exponential better reload time between like one shell to the next shell. None of that. It's a flat slope based on the reload time and the difference between them. So it's a math, but 
nerd stuff. So basically, if the time difference between the each shell reload is different, then it depends on the curve of the slope. But this is mostly applied towards the set stats of the premium because it's a little bit different. As you can see with the delta difference of the first shell to the second, yeah, it's a little bit exponentially a lot better for the last shell than for the first. I'm confusing you, but that's that's all I got. So <laughs> math, and here's the summary. So it should be pretty interesting. Well, it's a new system. It's not like a stupid in-your-face Russian tank that you don't have to do anything, and it's idiot-proof. So I'm glad it's not like that. I'm glad it's not a dumb tank that you just have to sit there and take all the hits <laughs> and fire high explosive and just don't care. <laughs> like the Type 5, that's a dumb tank. It's fun, but it's so dumb. So yeah, a lot of the times, a lot of the players will find that a vehicle or a whole new tank line is not that appealing and they make a pseudo myth or pseudo judgment on the whole tech line and they don't play it. That's why nobody plays the 113 GFT, the Chinese tank destroyer. I only saw it once and I killed it and that was it. I never seen it again in like six months. Never saw one. <laughs> so yeah, if you have a predisposed notion about or negative opinion about a whole new tech line, you will probably not play the whole new tech line. And also, yeah, that kind of sucks. So new tanks means nothing. Nobody have them. Nobody plays them. It's basically collecting dust. So the whole new tech line just fails. Like the 113 GFT. Nobody plays it. <laughs> so that kind of sucks. Also, it's only applied to the high tiers. You cannot have this system on the tier 5 or tier 6. That also sucks. <laughs> so it's like with the siege mode for the S tank. You have to wait until tier 8, or you have to buy the premium, but also the tier 8 doesn't have armor. So the mode is kind of useless for the UDES, but... Ugh. <sighs> well, we'll see if future mechanics difference or new mechanics will be applied to lower tiers, but... It's kind of rough, but for this system, it's not that bad. So we'll see the fine-tuning by Wargaming in the future, but for now... It's not that bad. It's not like the 113 GFT bad of a plane of a vehicle. That thing has no velocity for the shell. That thing has a gigantic lower plate. And it has like 11 horsepower per ton ratio compared to the 20 on the Object 268 version number 4. Freaking ridiculous. It has only like 400 more DPM. That's it. A little bit better accuracy, but Jesus. It's a salt gun doesn't perform as a salty of a gun like the 268 version number 4. So basically the whole tank line fail. <laughs> Ugh. But there you go folks. My little bit analysis math nerd on this stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully it educates you, informs you, edument form, edument form. Yeah, sure. But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.